So we have looked at the difference in design philosophies between Unix and Windows. Uh, we have understood the client server model of computation as well as uh, understood what is meant by the multi-user and multitasking operating systems. So now is the correct time to take a look at the Unix system as a whole. Uh, the Unix system can be visualized uh, using the layered approach or the ovals as are shown in the slide. In the centermist uh, oval, you will have all your hardware resources, the processors, hard disk, network cards and anything else which can touch and feel in the system. Immediately around this, uh, it is surrounded by uh, operating system layer which I am not going to give any name to the layer but uh, this layer actually has your memory management, uh, process scheduling, device drivers and system calls. So memory management is needed because since it's a multi-user multitasking operating system some centralized controller has to allocate and deallocate memory. Uh, process scheduling is needed because you need to do a fair amount of uh, CPU time allocation between the different processes and it should not become like a stampede, rather you want it to be fairly covered. Uh, device drivers are needed because they provide a consistent interface to the kernel uh, for the various devices. So you have your various different kinds of network cards, say for example, say you could take a network card from Intel and you buy another network card from Realtek. Now both these network cards will have certain uh, parts which will be specific to them, uh, the particular chip which they are using and there will be another communication part which will be generated. Uh, say for example, write data to the network socket or write, send out data to the port. Now this is a very generic call. How it maps to each of the individual network cards is a vendor specific property or a chip specific property. So the device drivers, what they do is they allow you a uniform interface on one side as well as doing uh, vendor specific or chip specific tasks on the other side. Uh, system calls, we are not going to delve into detail right now, but uh, suppose say in some case you want to get something done through the hardware, but uh, since you don't have direct access to the hardware, uh, what you do is you actually end up making a system call. The system call will uh, execute the necessary instructions or do the task for you and return the results back to you. Immediately around this layer, we actually have a, another layer wherein reside all your user level file systems, networking stack and various other service teams. So user level file systems are needed because uh, though the data on hard disks are bits and bytes, but you organize them in a particular fashion for easy retrieval. An example on Windows, you nowadays have NTFS, previously it used to be FAT32. Uh, Linux, one of the most popular uh, file system is the second extended file system version 3 or EXT3FS. The networking stack is needed because uh, the packets flow in a layered fashion and that processing uh, is needed as to where they need to be routed and lot of other network jugglery. Uh, there are various other service demons and demons are an interesting concept in Unix. Uh, say you uh, want to do some uh, task and that task uh, requires some intervention from the innermost layer. You don't want to bother the innermost layer so that demon serves as an intermediary. Uh, it's sort of like, uh, I sh should say the word comes from uh, the Greek mythology where the demons were acting as intermediaries between the mortal humans, say you and your processes and the kernel that is the god. Outside this layer you have the various applications uh, and one of the most in important applications you have is the user shell. The user shell runs as the particular user which is owning that shell. So if I say my name is Anup and I log on to the system, I have a shell named as bash then bash will run as Anup. It is not going to run as the system administrator account. So Unix gives you a wide variety of shells which you can choose from. Each one comes with its own set of uh, nuances that is the good and the bad thing and we will look at these uh, things in detail in the later slides. Almost all your uh, commands you will be typing out through the shell and that is what will be your primary interface to the kernel. 
the moment you type out a command on the shell, it is going to execute it and maybe make any system calls as they need be and try to keep them as transparent to you as possible and return the results back to you. So this uh, discussion of differences between uh, Unix and Windows cannot be complete uh, till the time we also compare differences in GUIs between the two. So the GUI on uh, Windows is actually fairly straightforward. So this is uh, shown in the left box where I'm pointing right now. So let's start from the bottom. You have your uh, CRT LCD monitor. It's directly connected to the graphics card. And then there is the OS abstraction layer. I have uh, just uh, put everything here together, device drivers or whatsoever. And you have a replication. So Internet Explorer, uh, Media Player, PowerPoint, they are all directly talking to the OS abstraction layer and directly getting displayed onto the your monitor. So contrast this with uh, Unix, which is uh, shown in the box on your right. Uh, the lower two boxes are same. That is, you have a LCD monitor and you have a graphics card and above that is what we call as the X server. So on uh, Unix, the GUI runs as a separate process. It is not there as part of the kernel. In the previous slide, what we have shown was the closest oval. It's not there. It's there as one of the farthest ovals and uh, it is known as the X windowing system. So you can check out more about the X windowing system in our reading links of this slide as well as Google up for it. So X windowing system like everything else on Unix was always designed to be networking capable. And uh, that is what is there. So immediately above the X server you have a networking layer or some other interface. And above this is you have your Firefox which is a browser, M player or media player and open office which is a open source uh, sort of a competitor to the Microsoft office. So all these applications first talk to the network layer and then they get displayed onto the X server and these applications run as client. So the good thing is that uh, since the networking component is built in, I can actually connect to any other Unix system and directly tell the application there to display out onto my display. So uh, remember the slide wherein we were uh, actually showing a graphics rendering system and that graphics rendering would actually be making use of this uh, display over the network. So I can connect to as many systems say Unix 1, Unix 2, Unix 3 and uh, point them to my display and say hey why don't you output all your data onto my display and it would work just fine. 